Hello everybody and welcome to another Darkest Dungeon mod overview. My name is Element5, and today we're taking a look at Marvin Sayo's The Falconer. It is midnight Wednesday, October 31st, 2018. Happy Halloween everybody. For the last month, Marvin has been teasing us with awesome promos and pieces of artwork uh, and the notion that he would be releasing a Falconer 2.0, a revamp to the original iteration of the Falconer class, his first modded class, uh, and it is finally here, released on Halloween, and I cannot wait to show it off to you guys. I have had the pleasure of playing with the beta version, and now the full release version, helping Marvin test this and figure it out myself, and it is a ton of fun to play. While this mod is certainly a revamp, this may be uh, the most content-rich mod that Marvin has put out thus far. The new release of the Falconer comes with eight trinkets exclusive to the Falconer class, including a Crimson Court and COM set, as well as eight new special Talon Brigand enemies. That's right, new enemies added to the game. Talon Brigands. Seven new trinkets that drop from these brigands, usable by any class. A mini boss. Two trophy trinkets. Custom background. Uh, and a ton of fun things to run into and to explore. And in terms of her overall revamp, if her old kit left you sort of feeling wanting in terms of mechanics and flexibility, that is completely changed this time around. She is the most flexible she's ever been. She fits tons of situations, compositions, provides some very interesting options, including Mark Synergy, Bleed Synergy. But before we jump completely into her abilities, let's just take a little bit of a glance at her backstory. A defected criminal the Falconer specializes in disrupting the enemy team and taking advantage of her prey's weaknesses. She fires a steady and reliable volley of arrows while her falcon attacks from the skies to create opportunities for its master to finish her victims. Should she be caught in the front ranks, she is not left helpless. She can perform a hasty retreat to get back into a more favorable position, execute hit and run attacks, or catch her foes by surprise with a flanking attack or improvised stab with an arrow. The Falconer knows that every foe is different and that she must adapt to triumph over each adversary. She can focus her fire to maim her targets, command her Falcon to attack in coordination with her actions, and even hide for a more opportune time to strike. Whatever the threat, the Falconer will always be prepared. Due to some past ordeal, the Falconer is constantly hunted by members of her former group, known as Talon Brigands. Occasionally, she will be ambushed by these foes and her party will have to fend them off. As these special brigands are killed, some of the heroes that aided in their deaths will become marked and become hunted in the same manner as the Falconer. Fighting these brigands in bulk can yield great rewards, but be wary of gaining too many marks as the leader of the Talon Brigands will come to deal with you personally. And as with the rest of Marvin's classes, we get a brand new backstory comic strip. This is the Falconer's redone comic strip, and it starts with a falcon sitting on a branch outside the Talon Brigands hideout. We see the Talon Brigands inside, standing around a hooded slave girl, and we can see her upset, her hands bound. A really gnarly close-up here on the face of one of the brigands, the reaction uh, and distress of the slave. She turns her head to the right and catches the female form of one of the brigand archers. In a moment of desperation, she reaches out and pulls the hood off of the female archer, asking for help. And the falconer going full affliction here, a really beautiful shot as she strikes the face of the slave. Her feathers spread out as the affliction crown. The slave's head comes crashing down, connecting with the table, and she's killed instantly. The Brigands are not happy at the death of the slave. Swords are drawn. Falconer now realizing what she has done and that her life is in danger. Striking the slave was purposeful, but killing her was an accident. And now she's set to pay the price for that loss of life unless she runs. Getting a lot more of her backstory in this version of the Falconer. Uh, definitely through trinkets, through the enemies. Um, through that description alone, but it's very interesting. She is sort of she brings to the game sort of a combination of shield breaker and fanatic, which is a lot of fun. Adding her to your group comes with a 60% chance that she will spawn an encounter with the brigands after camping, not unlike the shield breakers mechanic. 
And completing these encounters, which are challenging and change when you get into veteran and champion gameplay, come with some pretty nice rewards, including more of her lore and some pretty nice loot to take home. But as is mentioned in the description, defeating these brigands also comes with the consequence of taking home a negative quirk called Marked by the Flock on one of your heroes. This is quite interesting. Marked by the Flock adds 5% stress damage received to the hero uh, based on the fact that you have interfered in the Flock's ordeals. And if all four of your composition have Marked by the Flock and you start a dungeon, you have a 100% chance to spawn a dungeon with the mini-boss, uh, not unlike the fanatic spawning mechanic when enough of your heroes have the Crimson Curse. And while I won't give too much away about the mini-boss itself in this video, mark my words, it is pretty awesome and quite challenging. But let's talk about her abilities. Let's see how she works. Now, in terms of her stats and resistances, the, the Falconer is not too different than she used to be. Nothing too interesting, really, than just to note that she has five dodge, decent speed, uh, you know, mediocre damage, which will be changed a lot by her abilities and by her trinkets, obviously, uh, whether you mark things or not. Uh, quite good uh, crit rating, actually, and zero accuracy modifiers. In terms of her resistances, she's decent at disabling traps. Everything else is, for the most part, sort of average. I suppose 40% disease resist is kind of nice, but nothing too specific other than to just note that she has pretty good crit chance, pretty good dodge and speed, um, and is otherwise sort of squishy. This makes her feel and play a lot like a rogue, and we'll get into that with her abilities. But before we jump into her abilities, we need to discuss one very primary mechanic uh, that comes with Falconer 2.0, and that is this down here. At the bottom of each and every one of her abilities in her kit, you have skill 1 effects, which do something, as well as skill 2 effects, which do something else. And you'll notice that this is called Quick Shot slash Crippling Shot. Well, the key to understanding this comes down to this ability right here, Adapt. Adapt is brand new to the Falconer. It can be used in any position. Uh, it changes from skill 1 effects to skill 2 and back again. And important to note that this does not end her turn, so you have the freedom to use this limitlessly on her turn and swap between Quick Shot and see if you'd like to use skill effects 1 and buff self for speed, or hit Adapt, swap to Crippling Shot, and instead use skill effects 2 and throw some debuffs on a target. And that is true for every ability in her kit, which makes her by far more flexible and more adaptable, if you will, than she's ever been before. So let's break down her abilities here. If we take a look at Quick Shot slash Crippling Shot, it is usable in rank three or four. It targets enemies in rank two, three, or four. It is a ranged attack with an accuracy base 90, a good crit modifier of plus nine, 30% damage versus marked enemies. And if you use Quick Shot, you will buff self one speed, and if you instead change it to Crippling Shot, you will then debuff your target for minus 10 dodge and minus one speed with 100% base chance. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Next in her kit is Eye Thief slash Ravage. This can be used in any rank and it targets any enemy in any rank. It is a ranged attack that has an accuracy base 95, minus 75% damage modifier, 8% crit modifier. It bypasses stealth, de-stealths de the enemy target. It debuffs the enemy target for minus 10 accuracy. So this is especially effective once you get to the veteran game where you're going to start to run into stealth enemies, you can de-stealth the enemies, and you can debuff their accuracy. If you use Eye Thief, it will mark a target. If you use Ravage instead, it will bleed a target for two over two rounds with the added 100% bleed amount when applied versus marked. This makes her really interesting in bleed groups and mark groups. And uh, this down here, this 100% bleed amount when applied versus marked, should not be taken for granted. You can land a pretty significant bleed with her now against classes that have mark.
Next is something brand new to her kit, which takes her out of being sort of locked into the back line doing range damage and brings her up front as sort of a scrapper or rogue. Flank slash gouge can be used in position 3, 2, or 1, and it targets enemies in 1 or 2. It is a melee attack that moves her forward 1, an accuracy base 85, plus 5% crit modifier, plus 40% damage while she is stealthed, which we'll get to in a bit. It debuffs a target for minus 10 accuracy, and if you decide to use flank, it has armor piercing versus marked, and if instead you go with gouge, it has plus 30% damage versus bleeding. Again, we have more mark and bleed synergy, a bit of armor piercing, which is pretty sweet. Next then is the revamped Volley Fire and Flurry. Volley Fire Flurry can be used in rank 3 or 4. It is a ranged attack that targets all backline enemies in rank 2, 3, and 4. It has an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of minus 45%, and a crit modifier of minus 4%. Its primary effect is to do AoE range damage or debuffs. And by using Volley Fire, you're just doing straight damage. And if instead you decide to use Flurry, you add a shuffle single 90% chance to the enemies in order to shuffle up their positions. Flurry's damage is significantly reduced by 75%, and it debuffs enemies by minus 10 accuracy. So if one of your backline enemies is low health, and you want to get damage into all three of them and get that kill, Volley Fire is a great way to go. If instead you are in the ruins, or maybe the wield, and shuffling enemies is going to give you good value, you want to debuff the enemies uh, for accuracy, Flurry provides a really nice debuff mechanic. Well struck. Next is the new Spirited Cry slash Stock. Spirited Cry Stock can be used in rank 3 or 4 only. If you decide to use Spirited Cry, it will de-stealth herself, clear stuns on all heroes in the party, add 5% crit buff to all heroes, and reduce stress by 1 at level 1. If instead you decide to go with Stock, you self-stealth for 3 rounds, as well as add 15% crit until the self-stealth ends. So therefore, using Spirited Cry is not too dissimilar than the way it used to be. It's still a means to clear stuns from the group, provide a group buff, as well as spam just a little bit of stress relief. However, Stock now adds the ability for the Falconer to stealth herself and get a pretty significant buff while she is stealthed. And finally, the last new ability added to the Falconer's kit is Fleeting Escape slash Harrier. This is a ranged attack which can only be used in rank 1 or 2, and it targets both enemies in rank 1 and 2. It sends the Falconer back two spots, from position 1 or 2 to 3 or 4. It has an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of minus 66%, minus 1% crit modifier, it debuffs the enemies in rank 1 or 2 by minus 7 accuracy, and if you decide to use Fleeting Escape, it will clear marks off the Falconer, as well as have a 66% chance to stealth her for 2 rounds, whereas going with Harrier adds a knockback 1 90% base chance to the enemies, and 100% damage done.
So you can see then that this is a far more flexible and mechanically interesting Falconer than she ever was before. Uh, I think Marvin has done a phenomenal job with this, and essentially what this means is that while she is not a transformation class, uh, having adapt as part of your kit, though it makes you feel sort of limited by having three abilities and the swap ability, uh, the abilities themselves come with the two skill effects swaps, which make it almost feel like you're bringing six abilities into the fight. And of course she has a really nice uh, variety of kits depending on how you want to play her. You can certainly play her sort of more frontline by going with flank, gouge, fleeting escape, maybe taking adapt as well, and then using eye thief. This puts you in an ability to really be kind of roguish, move forward and back, uh, mark from any position, do a lot of bleeding or armor piercing, uh, synergizing that with the mark of eye thief, as well as just doing damage or shuffling the front line, moving her back to the back line and then repeating with flank gouge all over again. If instead it just works to play the Falconer as more of the backline class that she always was, you can certainly take Quick Shot and Crippling Shot, firing out from position 3 and 4, debuffing enemies and buffing her speed, throwing down AoE volleys and debuffing the enemy group, shuffling them around, and then you're sort of free to substitute if you would like to take Eye Thief and add bleed and mark synergy into the group, or instead take Spirited Cry, have the ability to Stealth herself should she be under serious duress, or clear stuns, buff the crit of your group, and do a little bit of de-stress as well. And should you choose not to bring Adapt as a part of your kit, you could certainly do so. Uh, there are plenty of builds that will work without using Adapt. You could just use Quick Shot in combination with Eye Thief, Volley, and say Spirited Cry. This plays her fairly similar to the way that the original iteration used to work, having Mark, Mark Synergy, with Quick Shot, AoE Volley Fire, and Spirited Cry. However, not bringing Adapt means you just won't be able to access the skill 2 effects of any of these abilities. And the other really important thing to take into consideration is her lore, her backstory, and the enemies that you encounter as you play her. Again, she's being hunted by the Talon Brigands uh, that we saw in her comic strip and in her backstory. And if you are a veteran of DD, you know that the Brigands are, for the most part, AoE humanoids. And by going up against AoE oriented enemies with frequency, it is worthwhile considering taking certain compositions to help mitigate the damage and mechanics that they bring. Remember to think about the fact that characters with repost abilities are quite effective against brigands and AoE enemies, and the AoE heals of certain healers do a pretty decent job at countering the AoE bleeds that come from some of the bigger brigands, as well as the volley fires that you'll constantly be hit from by the archers. Funny enough, it is also worth thinking about bringing Laudanum as a provision with your comps should you play the Falconer. That might sound surprising, but there are certain enemies which are very, very cleverly designed as uh, alternatives to madmen, which do a very decent job at stressing out your heroes, Nonetheless, I appreciate that Marvin has tried to make Laudanum a more effective, more relevant, and not so useless provision in Darkest Dungeon, and I think with the Falconer revamp, he has done that. Now, in terms of her camping kit, the Falconer has the base and courage, wound care, and pep talk in her kit, as well as four unique camping skills, which are quite valuable. Starting off with Fletchery, which is a time cost two, Self only, plus 10 accuracy to range skills for 4 battles, and a 5% crit to range skills for 4 battles. This is not too different than the original iteration of the Falconer's uh, ranged buffs, but for a time cost to really quite worth it, especially if she's one of your primary damage dealers and you are using her in the back line with abilities like Quick Shot Crippling and not abilities like Flank and Gouge. She also comes with Scavenge. Scavenge is a time cost 3, self only 15% scouting chance for 4 battles, and produces a random amount of food. So this is an amalgamation, a combination of two of her old camping skills, which retain some scouting value, scouting very powerful in Darkest Dungeon, but this is also where she retains the random amount of food. Uh, this is quite nice actually if you are just in a long dungeon, you've had to use food to maybe heal off a couple ticks for some reason, and you're running low and you might be at a food check around the corner, get a little bit of food from this. Not too bad at time cost 3. Next in is Camouflage. Camouflage, time cost 2, plus 10 accuracy while stealthed. 
15% chance monster surprise is fairly intuitive. It means you get to go first on the first round before the enemies do, which gives you full initiative and a ton of advantage in battle. The 10% accuracy while stealthed is really interesting if you're going to be taking along a kit including flank, which does 40% damage while stealthed. Maybe you're stealthing herself uh, by using stock for three rounds, or you're going for that 66% chance stealth roll uh, with fleeting escape. So therefore, if you're using a build something like this that's maybe her more melee build, then consider taking along Camouflage. And finally, her last camping ability is her Prevent Nighttime Ambush. Heightened Senses is time cost 4, prevents nighttime ambush, minus 30% chance party surprise, which is always quite nice. But this is the very interesting piece here, 20 dodge versus Talon Brigands. So you're going to go into a medium or longer dungeon, you're going to be able to use a camp, you have a 60% chance after that camp to summon the Talon Brigands encounter. Might as well buff 20 dodge versus those Talon Brigands because they can be kind of difficult and the Falconer can be a little bit fragile. Remember that your entire team is focused by AoE attacks and therefore her chance of being killed at Death's Door is much higher against AoE enemies. Now in terms of trinketing the Falconer, Marvin suggests just improving the efficacy and output of her damage, and I tend to agree. You want to make her arrows as sharp as possible, and therefore thinking about adding plus 25% damage on something like Dismas's head, maybe using the Ancestor's Candle, maybe instead improving her overall accuracy and damage with something like a Sun Ring, even though this is significantly not what it used to be. Either way, uh, improving her damage output is certainly the way to go. She's accurate enough, she has great mark synergy, what you want her to do is hit hard when she hits, and uh, you will not regret it. Overall, I have to say that I am just massively pleased and impressed with this particular revamp. Not only is she more fun to play, more dynamic, and more interesting, and the enemies that Marvin individually animated, illustrated, and coded are phenomenal. They are a ton of fun, they are clever, they are challenging, and that's what we want out of Darkest Dungeon. Bravo, Marvin. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions about the Falconer revamp, you know we welcome them in the comments section below. Of course, I'll include the link to download the Falconer below the video, as well as links to the other attached mods for the Falconer, her CC Trinkets mods, COM Trinkets, Immediate Town Event, and all that good stuff. And if you haven't seen it yet, make sure to check out the latest Moonlit Dungeon video. Marvin has done an absolutely phenomenal job developing one of the new enemies for Moonlit Dungeon, and it has totally blown me away. My name has been Element5. It is damn good to be making content for you all. Thank you guys so much for the support. We will see you next time.